Ruby. Yes. There's a whole bunch there, some that I'm excited about, some that I just really don't think I'm even going to bother with. But what, what, what are your top picks? Well, look, the worried excitement that people feel towards Trainspotting 2 and Blade Runner 2049, I completely feel as well. In mm. fact, if there's any film on that list that I'm concerned for, but actually feeling quite good about, is Blade Runner 2049, because it's Denis Villeneuve who made such a tremendous job of Arrival, one of my favourite films of last year. You know, you've got Hampton Fancher, who was one of the writers on the original Blade Runner, he's come back to do the right. screenplay for this. Roger Deakins is shooting it. And my word, if you've seen the teaser trailer for it, I mean, it just looks just phenomenal. There are shots of Ryan Gosling wandering through this sort of dusty, golden orange wasteland. I mean, it's like something out of Tarkovsky's Stalker or something. It is incredibly stylized and heightened and not what you expect to see in a blockbuster. So, you know, I have everything all appendages crossed for this film. Wow. I do suspect that it will deliver it to an extent because it's it's very promising. The other one, a bit like that, is Alien Covenant. Now, I was one of the few people I know who really like Prometheus. And, Definitely one of the few. Yeah, right, exactly. Now, when that film came out, there was a proposed sequel called Paradise. I think Alien Covenant is the film that Paradise has become. Okay. Um, and I'm very excited to see what they do with that. I think potentially this idea that they've slightly fingers burned by Prometheus. They've gone back to make a more obviously alien-like alien film. You know, you've got Catherine Waterston running around looking quite a lot like Ellen Ripley. And whether they, they will rest too much on the laurels that the series has already earned mm. or will go on to do something different, I don't know. I hope it's the latter. Mm. Um, a couple of small... And Free Fire as well, goodness, that was mentioned. I yeah. saw Free Fire at London Film Festival last oh, year. Oh, you've seen it? Lots of fun. I mean, it is a contraption. You know, this is a fil- an entire film is built around one shootout and you've got this enormous ensemble cast like literally about 12 people engaged in the shootout and it is a feat it's like Ben Wheatley has sat down and said how can I prove that I am a, you know a director who is capable beyond all shadow of a doubt of, of, of making something incredibly confusing immediately <laughs> comprehensible and this is what he does it's pure chaos but at every minute in this film you know where everyone is you know where every bullet is flying you know so wait, are you telling me it's a feature length shootout yes I mean, there's a little bit of preamble to set the scene. I think it's set in a Boston Harbour warehouse where some um, IRA guys have turned up to do a a, a gun, an arms deal with some uh, local gangsters. And it goes south very quickly for the most pathetic reasons. Right. And then the rest of it is just chaos and carnage. And it's almost like, you know, it owes something to Sam Peckinpah, to early Scorsese. Scorsese's an executive producer on it as well. So, you know, it's got that that, um, pedigree as well. But it's like Ben Wheatley's saying, you know, in those olden days of otter-led B-movies, that's a trend that has basically died now. And he is playing around in the post-apocalyptic rubble of that trend. And it's wonderfully fun and very, very cleverly done. There's another film I want to to draw attention to called The Lost City of Zed, which is the new film by James Gray, whose last film, The Immigrant, I think went straight to DVD in this country. It's it's available. It it was out in France and the US. It, It was a really kind of muffled release. Right for a very uh, handsomely staged, and I've, I've initially the first time I saw it, I didn't like it at all, but went back to, he recut it after its premiere quite extensively. And then I, I caught up with it again recently and really, really enjoyed it. But it's a very kind of sober and difficult film about um, Marion Cotillard coming to, weirdly in a, a similar way to Fantastic Beasts, coming mm-hmm. to America and trying to make a living as a first generation Polish immigrant um, in New York. Now, The Lost City of Zed, is this kind of grand explorer's story about this guy called Percy Fawcett, based on a true story of a 19th century British explorer who went off to the Amazon on a number of expeditions because he was convinced that there was a lost civilization that was maybe not necessarily still thriving, but there was remnants of the civilization somewhere out in the jungle. And he was going to be the guy that would find it. And basically, if you found James Gray's films previously very beautiful and classically composed and, you know, beautiful pieces of craftsmanship, but you found them a little bit cold. This is the film that I think will turn you around mm. completely. I mean, the it's it's a wonderful story about fatherhood. The entire final act of this film, which I won't even begin to describe, but involves his last expedition, had me just, you know, blown to the back wall of the cinema. It is so beautiful. I don't remember going into a new year as excited about one film as I as, as I am about this since Under the Skin, uh, which is one of my you know all time favorite films of this of this century. Um, I think it's wow. a, a major major piece of work and should hopefully find James Gray the fan base that he he deserves. 